Hey guys, nice to virtually meet you all. I am here to make your lives easier as teachers teaching online. Distance learning can be a bit boring and too centered on the information at hand. How can we turn this experience around into an interactive one? By transforming it into an engaging brainstorming session. Here are the eight steps of how brainstorming for building knowledge can be accomplished online that I'd love to share with you. Trigger and contextualize. First, kick off by stimulating your students' minds with contextualized visual support documents that relate to the topic you're discussing. Share photos, videos, audio documents, just to get the ball rolling. After that, engage with them by asking questions that trigger their thought process. This might also start a conversation and could be an interesting start. But don't forget to constantly lead, manage, and sustain the visual classroom, encourage their motivation, expressions, ideas, emotions, while exploring the subject without giving them the answers from the start. Tip of the day, always yes and their ideas, never block their train of thought. Step two, brainstorm. Welcome to step two, where we discuss the process of brainstorming online. Let your students' ideas reign. There are no wrong answers. All ideas are welcome. The objective of this exercise is to build your students' courage, especially the shy ones, to share while revealing their conceptions and misconceptions related to the idea itself. Ideas can be shared via post-its on screen to add an element of fun to the brainstorming process. Make sure to keep a record of all the ideas. They're precious and will be useful for the next step. Tip of the day, there are no rejected ideas. Step 3. Manage data. During a brainstorming session, lots of ideas are shared. In this third step, we teach students how to filter the ideas that relate from those that don't. From the start, remember never to judge. It blocks the student's thinking process and sets doubt in them. That's something you don't want. However, to shed light on the relatable ideas versus those that don't, ask your students questions that guide them to reaching that conclusion on their own. Let it be an open discussion. After all, learning should be fun. Tip of the day, eliminate the off-topic ideas. Step four, categorize. Welcome to step four where it's all about categorization. Start by dividing the students into groups on your digital platform and ask them to group the words or expressions by categories and give a label to each set. This is where they are given the independence to think on their own and implement it in their categorization activity. After that, ask students to send or share a photo of their work Ask them what they think of the categorization. Do not interfere. Remember always, yes and them. Tip of the day. Categorization is the core of organization, even when it comes to thought. Step five. In the fifth step, this is where each group is asked to present its categories online. We emphasize on the importance of the student's independent and individual thinking, also known as metacognition, by making discussions about the categories done by each group. Initiate the conversation by asking them the rationale behind their categorization. This is where you identify the different thinking process of the same student groups. Adding to that, highlight the obstacles and misconceptions that might surface, but never judge. Remember that. Tip of the day. Share, analyze, and realize the differences in students' thinking. Step 6. Inquire. We're on the sixth step of our eight-step video tutorial, and this is where the students are asked to discover and to understand the different concepts related to the subject by providing them with a series of studied and guided questions and document support that pertain to their level. The resources you chose to share with your students can be sent via school's LMS, Padlet, or another online communication platform. The documents should be diverse, updated, visual, and relatable to add some food for thought along with clear instructions in order to allow your students to make their own synthesis. Need help with questions? You can use Google Forms for that. They're great. Tip of the day, empower their potential to inquire and analyze. Step 7. Discuss. This is my favorite step. Step 7 is all about discussion and learning through listening. Divide the classroom into the same discussion groups and let them identify the mistakes and misconceptions on their own, while leading the discussion with questions that shed light on the decisions that they have taken regarding the activity. Ask them why they are mistakes. Shed light on the errors and misconceptions positively. Try to reach a common synthesis about the topic in a smooth way. Tip of the day, learning from mistakes is the key to development. Step 8. Synthesis. We're finally at the eighth and final step of our tutorial. Compile the main ideas discovered about the topic and summarize them in a visually attractive presentation. You can use PowerPoint or Prezi. 
they are easy and provide various design options that can add a touch of charm to your document. Like this, you can end on a beautiful note. Tip of the day, leave a long-lasting takeaway. Thank you.